A supercell thunderstorm is rather rare, and unlike normal thunderstorms, a supercell has a lot of rotation within it. It's anywhere from three to four, maybe five miles in diameter. Not all thunderstorms become supercells. Differences in the speed and direction of the wind on the ground and at the top of the supercell are called wind shear. This creates updrafts causing the heart of the storm to rotate. It can transform thunderstorms into supercells. However, only 30% of known supercells ever turn tornadic. But predicting if this storm will produce a tornado is for the moment beyond our technology. Making a call on whether to warn residents or evacuate them is every city emergency manager's nightmare. Bringing a city of six million people to a standstill will cost a fortune. Not doing so may cost lives. Okay, folks, I know your time's precious, so I'll keep it short. Basically, we're getting reports there's a big storm system building out west. It could be tracking towards Dallas. Wait a minute, it's actually tracking towards the city? Well, no, sir, not yet, but today's weather conditions are perfect for a tornado. Our storm chases are heading out west to have a look. Any touchdown, Jen? I sat here last week while you told us the storm was tracking towards the city. Ten minutes later, it's gone. Disappears off the scope. When you can give me some reliable information, you call me. But even with the most advanced technology, tornadoes are some of the most difficult storms to predict. They can strike more so without warning or with very little lead time warning just before it occurs. One thing is for sure. There are now several storms approaching Dallas. All of them are powerful supercells. None has yet produced a tornado, but they are still dangerous in other ways. of this extreme turbulence is a phenomenon called a microburst. Twenty thousand feet above commercial aircraft, the warm air that has been sucked up through the center of the supercell begins to cool. It then starts to fall at phenomenal speeds, back down on the outside of the supercell. Planes are in the most danger around takeoff and landing when the rushing air hits the earth with such force that it bounces, kicking planes higher. Unwary pilots attempt to compensate for this sudden burst, and once they get through it, can find their planes dangerously close to the ground. This is one reason it is vital that the National Weather Service monitor the skies. While balloons measure the temperature of each layer in the air, they also search out extreme temperature differences that can fuel approaching storms. Radar provides the speed of a storm and shows whether it is spinning, but even that won't give a full picture. Part of the problem with radar is that it can undershoot or overshoot a storm depending upon where it's at. And it does so at like six minute intervals. So imagine, opening your eyes and closing them, and then you're not gonna open them for another six minutes. You're not gonna know what is happening in between. Storm spotters like this one are usually the first to see storms of this size reach maturity. The clouds take on a very distinctive shape. What happens next is critical. EOC, come in, this is Chuck. specific signs that experts can look for in cloud formation that signal whether these storms are potential killers. So what I'm going to be looking for is a wall cloud. This is a lowering at the back end of the thunderstorm. And I'm going to watch that wall cloud and see if it begins to rotate. Call us on the webcam so we can have a look. Man, it's massive. What's going on out there?
Okay. This baby's on the move. I'm gonna track her. Once it's on the move, the tornado's strength is estimated by the damage it leaves. This is called the Fujita scale. An F1 tornado starts at 75 miles per hour and can blow the tiles off a roof. An F2 kicks in at 113 miles per hour and can destroy mobile homes. An F3 starts at 158 miles per hour and uproots trees and rips the roofs off houses. An F4 picks up at 208 miles per hour and can lift a train. But the real killer is an F5. With winds up to 318 miles per hour, it can destroy anything in its path. The only thing faster is the shock wave from an atomic bomb or a super tornado. As the supercells approach the suburbs, they suck in millions of gallons of warm, moist air coming up from the Gulf of Mexico. But even a few miles ahead of the storm, there is little indication of what is about to happen. Hi, this is Anna. Leave a message after the beep. Hey, honey, it's me. You must be on your way to pick up Toby already. Listen, there's a big storm out west. There's a big storm out west of Dallas. You two get home as quick as you can. I'm going to be working for Dennis another couple of hours, and then I'll get home as quick as I can. All right. Love you. Coming up, pieces fall into place. He's out! For the birth of a super tornado. West of Dallas, small tornadoes are beginning to touch down. In the suburbs, powerful gusts of wind are starting to cause damage. Short center field, right through the gap. And the crowd is going wild as he heads for home. He's out! Rush hour is just starting. As people head out onto the streets for the daily commute home, they may not know that this is a most dangerous time of day. What is going to cause the most fatalities? Is a tornado hitting at the worst possible time in the worst possible place? How about rush hour, 5 o'clock? Interstates are jam-packed with people. You know, tornadoes maximize in terms of numbers around 5 o'clock. The heat that has been building all day is the final ingredient for the super tornado. Heat provides the maximum fuel. Look at this. 24, 25 reported touchdowns between Oklahoma and here. This is serious. We could be hit. I think we should think about sounding the siren. Have there been any touchdowns in Dallas County? Well, you saw what Chuck was chasing. If there's anything in the air like that, it could hit Dallas County. I, it could miss us entirely. Yeah, but that's too big a risk. If we don't sound these sirens... Yeah, you're right. Okay, it's your call. In the last five years, Dallas tornado warning sirens have only been sounded three times. All those occasions were false alarms. The decision to sound them is never taken lightly. Okay, people, we're going to sound the sirens in Dallas County. It's about to get a little bit tough around here. I need everyone to stay focused. Stay focused. 